I cannot stress to you guys enough how important it is to leave detailed notes in your tickets. Last week, I briefly touched on this in the video that we did where we were introducing ticketing systems to you. If you haven't checked that out, I'll put a link in the description below. I highly recommend you guys check that out if you're looking to get into this field because ticketing systems are gonna be something you use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I briefly touched in that video about the importance of leaving detailed notes in your tickets. Today, I'm gonna to kind of walk you through that process and talk about why it's so important. And by the end of this video, you should have a good general understanding of why you're doing this and how to leave detailed notes as well. So let's jump into Service Desk and let's look at one ticket that I just created and left some detailed notes on. And we'll talk about why I left these notes and what's important about it. We have a user who can't access the internet. You've got this ticket in your email, you go and check it. And here is our screen. It says, can't access internet. I can't get on the internet on my computer. Now this, <laughs> this is something that you're gonna see all the time if your users are capable of submitting their own tickets. This is pretty much word for word exactly what you are going to see. Like I can almost guarantee that anytime you step into an environment, you'll see eventually a ticket just like this that has really no detail at all. Just here's my problem. So we know we have to call this user to get more information. So you call the user up and say, hey, what seems to be the problem? And they're probably gonna say, well, I can't access the internet. I actually talked about asking users the right questions when you get on the phone with them in another help desk series video. I'll put a link to that in the description as well because it's very important. But what you're gonna do is say, well, what can't you access? Is it the internet as a whole? Do you have to think about the entire enterprise going down because the internet's not working? Is it an issue with a specific website? Is there something else going on? So once you get those details, the user might come back and say, well, I can't access this specific website. So what you could do is open up that specific website in your own browser. Can you access it? Well, if you can, well then you know it's not an issue with the website, it's not an issue with the internet, there's something going on with this user's computer. So you know that we can remote into that computer and kind of take a look around. You could do a trace route from that computer and this is where you open up the command prompt and you run a trace route to that specific website and a trace route will tell you all the different hops that are being um, reached just to access this website. So it might go from your user's computer to um, the switch that it's plugged into, and that switch might go back to maybe um, the main switch in your building, and then it might go out the firewall. And once it leaves your firewall and leaves your organization, it might make 10 other hops before it actually gets to that specific website. So when a trace route is being done, it lets you know if you're able to access that website at all. So if you do that trace route and it comes back and says, yep, everything was working, you were able to get to that website just fine, you know that, well, it's not an issue necessarily with that user being able to access the website, but, but still, when you open up Internet Explorer on that user's computer, it shows that page can't be displayed. So now you have to start taking further steps. But let's stop right there. We already determined that we can access this website from our computer. We determined if we did a trace route from their computer, we can access that website as well. And now what we need to do is start leaving notes on what we did. Now don't pay attention to this top note. We wanna do this uh, first note here. It says called user to determine more information, which we talked about. We found the user was unable to access Google. I put Google as the example um, for this specific issue. This wouldn't be ideal, but you'll find that there are a lot of very specific websites that are utilized across the industry um, that people may have troubles with. Google was just our example for this, sorry. But anyway, found that user was unable to access Google. You were able to access Google from your computer. You, can you also could ping the computer, as we showed here. Ping computer name, ABC123, received a response back. So you knew before you even remoted in that user's computer that you know it's connected to at least your internal network. Then you remoted into that user's machine and did a trace route to Google, which returned the following results. You could then make a screenshot and put that screenshot in there that shows it was able to go through all these hops and it was successfully completed. And then you open up Google from Internet Explorer and it was unable to display the page. Well, what's your next step? And we put our next step here is we open Google from Firefox and the page was able to be displayed correctly. Now, this is something that's really important. There are still companies out there that utilize Internet Explorer and older versions of Internet Explorer to support specific applications. 
And some websites aren't going to be compatible completely with Internet Explorer, but most should be. For the purposes of this video, we're just saying that it's not compatible, which could be the case. And you know, well, if I could try it from another browser and it works, well, then it works, right? We know that that works. So we know that from Internet Explorer, that website just isn't going to work. Now, is this something that happens all the time? No. This is not something that happens all the time. This is something that's gonna be completely foreign to you at times. And you have to maybe go through even more steps to finally figure out exactly what's going on. Maybe you're flushing the DNS, maybe you're restarting the computer, which helps a lot of the times, but that's not what this video is about. We know that we've taken all these different steps. We've left detailed notes so that when this issue happens again, because it's so weird and just completely like an oddball issue, when they call back three weeks from now with the same issue, you might have forgotten all about it. Like you may just, may, I don't know, they might call back three months later, six months later, and you know that you helped them, but you don't remember what you did to fix the issue. So you could go and repeat all of these steps just because these are you know kind of typical troubleshooting steps that you might go through to solve issues, or you could go into your ticketing system, look this user up and find all the tickets associated with them and find the one that you created. This ticket is going to have all of your detailed notes like we have here. And as you can see, I left another note after the fact because we knew that we took all these steps to you know, troubleshoot the issue, we determined what the issue was, well, we left a new comment because that new comment is gonna be the top one shown. So we know if we look at this top comment here, this user is trying to access this specific website with Internet Explorer and this website is not compatible with IE, please use Firefox from now on. So we know that from this ticket, we have the results. And this is crucial because when you're leaving detailed notes like this, say for instance, you go back and you try to use it in Firefox, it's not working. Well, now you need to go back, create a new ticket for this issue because now this is actually a new issue. And now you need to leave more detailed notes again about the different steps that you took to resolve that issue. And then when it happens again, you can go back and look through your ticketing system to find the results. Now, this isn't just important for you. This is important for your entire team. Your whole team can go through the ticketing system and find what's going on with all the different issues in your environment because you all leave such great and amazing detailed notes in your tickets. And if you guys aren't doing this, shame on you. Please start doing it. This is so extremely important. You guys have no idea throughout the 18 plus years I've worked in this field, how many times it's been like a lifesaver to refer back to my ticketing system to find the answers. I'm not always gonna have the answers. People in your team aren't always gonna have the answers. And like we said, you might forget what you did. Other people in your team might forget what you did. So if you aren't leaving detailed notes in the tickets, well, then you have to repeat these steps over and over and over again. Instead, you could have just went to your ticketing system and looked up the past tickets to find exactly what it is that you needed to do. Now, I know this was kind of a brief, maybe oddball example that I've given you guys, but these are the types of things that you're gonna run across. Obviously, there are going to be more complex issues. And with those more complex issues, you have to leave detailed notes every step that you took. Because if that person or that issue comes back, when you go through those notes, maybe you know the end result of opening up Firefox isn't gonna work. And you need to repeat all these different steps. Or maybe you know that from that previous ticket, all these steps were taken and they couldn't solve the issue. So what are the next steps that we could take in our troubleshooting procedure to find out what that issue is? Now, I hope this makes sense to you guys. This was just the best way that I could kind of give a brief example of this and really kind of help you understand the importance of this. Because the importance of this is, it's your archive. This is your archive of answers for your environment. And you're gonna find from environment to environment, there are very specific types of issues that will happen. And if you can refer back to your notes, you'll be good to go. So please start leaving detailed notes in all of your tickets as much as you possibly can. And if you haven't gotten into the IT field yet, now you know that as soon as you get into their ticketing system, you can research 
past results if they were good at actually, you know, leaving their notes. And if they're not, you can start that process of leaving as much detailed information in these tickets as you can. So it'll help you out in the future. Your future self will thank you so incredibly much. I can't express that enough, but also again, your other team members will thank you as well. I will be creating future videos where we talk more about documentation for specific systems, for setting up different computers, and what it is that you actually need to document so that you can always refer back to and always repeat that same process. It's extremely important that documentation be a key thing that you guys are learning as you're getting into this field. Proper documentation is a lifesaver for you guys. So please start learning that or stay tuned for the new videos that I'll be putting out where I talk more details about creating proper documentation. I'm really excited to help you guys out as much as I possibly can. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, throw them in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. As always, Take it easy.